Hey, what is up everybody? Welcome back to BMW E90 HQ. So I finally got my BMW fixed. Yes, I know last video I was talking about how it was messed up, that the injectors got that fixed. And then uh, pretty much my battery died and I jumped the car because I had to go to work. You know, not even thinking about it at all. And uh, fried the FRM module. I mean, my headlights were stuck on, my front windows wouldn't go down, my turn signals didn't work at all. So, I mean, I could really just go around not using turn signals. Like I told my coworkers, I just had no choice but to cut people off. I had no choice at all. Um, but yeah, and uh, you know, so you know, it's just one thing after another. I mean, the FRM module is like 500 bucks new. Uh, you know, even more if you go to the dealership, they all wanted almost 600 after tax. So uh, I was able to save a little bit of money by buying it on FCP Euro. Also with their lifetime part guarantee, I'll be able to take it back. If uh, this ever happens again, obviously I'm not gonna go jumping my car again. Um, you, I use a trickle charger and just be late if I have to. Anyway, so I'm gonna break this kind of into two videos. So there's gonna be a part one, which is this. This is how to install it. So it's in a really hard spot to film. So I just took a bunch of pictures. So I'm gonna talk about what I did. I'm gonna overlay these pictures for a slideshow. So, uh, the pictures are pretty good. Uh, I could make a pretty good guide um, out of that. Um, that was really easy, that was the easy part, getting it in. The only hard part was these clips, uh, and you'll see that kind of when I'm going through everything. Uh, they were, they were, it didn't know how to get them off. Once I figured it out, it was really easy to get them off. It wasn't difficult at all. All in all, you can get the FRM out, put a new one in in an hour tops if you don't know what you're doing. If you know what you're doing, I'd imagine you could, you could get the job done in 30 minutes. No. That's easy. The hard part, or not even hard, if you know what you're doing with the programming, you can probably get that done in 10. Um, I had an idea of what I was doing, but I wasn't quite quite on the money, so it took me a really long time to figure out how to get the whole thing together. I probably spent a total of like eight hours, uh, you know, in, in segments, not at once, but like, you know, an hour here, two hours there, trying to figure out how to get this damn thing programmed. and. Uh, Anyway, once I figured it out, it was, it was super easy and I felt like an idiot for it taking so long. But uh, I'm going to break it into two videos because there's tons of guides on the internet on how to program these things, but they're wrong or they're just not detailed enough. I mean, they're really like, they assume that you're really comfortable operating these, these programs that you have and if you're not, then it's going to cause a problem. So, you know, if you have, if you want to know how to program, I've played around with these programs for hours. I, I know how they work. I know what they can do and kind of how to navigate them now. So I'll, I'll talk about that in another video. So first you'll see there are three torque screws. They're T20s underneath the steering wheel holding up a plastic panel. Go ahead and remove them. Once you remove them, you're going to, the panel will come out and there's a speaker and a light and a little SOS module and something else over on the on the left and I don't know what that is just unplug them all and take and move the panel out of the way put it in the passenger seat or something uh, next you're gonna have a the panel on your left that uh, is got the trunk release and the hood release there's a Phillips head screwdriver holding in the hood hood latch uh, go ahead and take that out, and then behind that there's another Phillips head screwdriver. Take that out, and then just go ahead and pull the whole panel out. Uh, it's held in by clips in the front, closer to the back, like towards the back of the car, and closer to the hood. Uh, pull that out, and you'll be able to see the FRM module right there. Go ahead and uh, get 10 millimeter socket, and uh, there you'll see a plastic bolt at the top and the bottom of the FRM module. Go ahead and undo those, they're 10 mils, and uh, put them somewhere for safekeeping. Then go ahead and when the FRM module is loose, you're gonna see that it's held in by a clip on the front and a clip on the, and two clips on the back that are connected to wiring harnesses. Now there's like a little black bump above those gray clips on there. Push in that black bump and slide the gray clip over it and then just pull out the wires and the FRM module is free and you can go ahead and remove it. Um, it's kind of tricky to get those clips at first if you don't know what you're doing. Like the first one took me the longest. Once I figured it out, I got the other two out in a minute. But I probably spent five. 
and then installing the F new FRM is the exact opposite. It's not any more difficult than that. Just put it in uh, and button everything back up the way you had it and your new FRM module is installed and ready for coding and that's where the fun begins. So check out my next video on how to code using uh, WinKFP and uh, NCS Expert to do this. Uh, you know, you can get that from uh, Beamer Geeks uh, website, beamergeeks.net, on their downloads page. Uh, I'll go into more detail about that in the next video. Uh, be sure to stay tuned for that, but that's how, how easy it is to change your FRM, or as it's known on uh, line also, the footwell module. Um, FRM, I guess, is the technical name. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.